Hello, I'm Sean Cubitt and I'm speaking about a, an essay on electric light and electricity that will be appearing in Theory, Culture and Society in December 2013. For millennia, all we had to light the night was um, oil lamps, candles, and for the very poor, rushes dipped in sheep's tallow and other animal fats, just lit by flame. In the 19th century, a huge revolution came first with arc lamps and then with gas lighting. But it was the 20th century that witnessed this great revolution. Probably nothing really marks the 20th century out from its predecessors so much as electric light. Thomas Edison famously invented the lamp, but he was more successful because he invented also the electric generator and the network to supply it. Very soon he capitalised this so heavily that competitors were almost entirely excluded from the market. In the colonies, the similar kind of networks produced institutions and engineering standards that would survive decolonisation all the way through to the period of neoliberalism in the 1980s, which attacked the natural monopolies such as electricity especially when they were nationalised as public infrastructures, but they maintained the centralised organisation of generating power, often at great distances from urban users, and as it happens, often using both hydroelectric and oil, coal and uranium, taken from the lands, the marginal agricultural lands that had become the reservations of indigenous peoples in, for example, Canada and Australia. Um, Despoliation of the commons has been an absolute characteristic of the supposedly clean energy of hygienic kitchens and clean domestic products. And that's without talking about batteries, the recycling of battery acids, and the horrors of lithium mining. The invention of real-time spot markets for power in the neoliberal electricity market combines with the complexity of the system and its dependence on the very power it generates to, con to power its computers to control the system, this sets the scene for a perfect storm of, for example, the northeast seaboard of the United States in 2003 and northern India's then recent deregulated market in 2012. The argument that I make here in the essay is that we need to think not only of complex systems falling into chaotic states but of the role of capital, neoliberal capital, in creating real-time markets that lend themselves to chaos and catastrophe. So the alternatives. In the slums of the megacities the most typical is to take electricity from the grid uh, through rather dangerous practice of simply tapping it or alternatively of using often very dirty diesel powered generators to produce local power for local um, workshops and lighting. Light now is an essential commodity. It is now not only part of our environment, it is our environment. So what if we were to abandon and learn to abandon the idea of centralized power generation as people have been forced to do in the slums and no longer place the generators far from its, the users, but instead look at how to reduce the integral waste of that system with truly local power. What if we begin to think of electricity in terms of a wind turbine, not in big farms, but a little wind turbine next to the TV aerial on every roof, solar panels where the sun shines and water mills where it doesn't. We have atomized transport and we've centralized power. It's time to switch that round.